Hey guys, welcome to another movie review. Today I'm going to be talking about the latest Goosebumps film, Goosebumps 2 Haunted Halloween. Uh, back in 2015, the first Goosebumps film came out, <coughs> Excuse me, and I really liked it a lot. I'm a huge Goosebumps fan. I read all the books as a kid, watched the TV show, I watched The Nightmare Room from R.L. Stein back in the day. Uh, tons of reasons why I was excited for this new Goosebumps sequel. Like I said, I did like the first film quite a bit. Really liked what Jack Black did as playing R.L. Stein in that film, and I liked how all the creatures from the books came to be in that movie and stuff like that. So, as you might be able to already tell, I was very excited to see Goosebumps 2 Haunted Halloween. Here we go. Here's my review. In Goosebumps 2 Haunted Halloween, you guys, it's focused on two new kids that were not in the first film. <coughs> Excuse me again. Um, and I think they're in a town that's somewhere in New the state of New York somewhere. They're not in New York City, but it is in the state of New York somewhere. And they are, are trying to... These two friends that are probably late middle school, early high school, probably late middle school, they're trying to start up a junk business where they go and collect and clean any junk that you have. Uh, they clean out a house. They clean out a junkyard if they're that ambitious. Uh, they're basically a junk business. But one day they get a phone call while their business is up and going. Uh, it's in between you know, homework and Halloween and all this stuff going on in their lives at a young age like that. Um, and they get this phone call saying they want... Uh, this woman wants them to clean the house of R.L. Stein, at least back when he lived in that town. Uh, so they go over there, um, and take note, this is not the same R.L. Stein house from the first uh, Goosebumps film, because the first Goosebumps film, I think, took place in Delaware somewhere. So this is in New York. So this is a different house that was used for this movie. And uh, like what R.L. Stein explained in the first film, he was always moving around a lot. So this is just one of the many houses he probably lived in at some point. So um, they go to this house, they clean it out. And in this secret conveyor fireplace thing, uh, these two kids find this, um, basically this buried treasure chest of, of sorts, and they find a book called Haunted Halloween in it, and it says Arl Stein's name on the book too. Um, it really doesn't kind of mean anything at first, they just kind of open it, see a couple of pages, it's unfinished, they just kind of toss it to the side. But things really start to get mixed up when um, they meet Slappy the Dummy, which is kind of randomly in the house. Uh, so they take Slappy the Dummy. Obviously, they did their junk business there and stuff like that. So they take Slappy home with them just because it's such a unique doll. The doll kind of gets them out of this really tough situation early on in the film, so they have more than, more than just one reason to keep it around and stuff like that. So they do find out Slappy the Dummy is alive, and this is the same Slappy the Dummy, or so it seems to be from the first Goosebumps film. And so basically Slappy promises them to improve their life and, you know, he has conditions that he wants to live up to, but he does have like an agenda of his own that he wants to do too, but he is going to help them with their homework. He's going to help them with, you know, getting rid of bullies and getting them out of chores and stuff like that. So the, once again, the kids have more than one reason to keep Slappy the dummy around. Uh, but things start to get out of place when Slappy starts to show up in places they don't want him to be. He ruins one of the kids' science projects. Um, he... Uh, I don't know if he's really a part of this, but something happens to the sister of this kid that makes her mad about stuff. Um, the mom of the family really likes Slappy the Dummy and wants to just keep him around just for puppetry purposes and stuff like that. But really when the, when the film really goes into pursuit here and really becomes Goosebumps 2 is when uh, things with Slappy start to not turn out very well. He's doing things that they don't want Slappy to do. Um, and so basically this is the part of the film where Slappy and these kids kind of part ways. And so with Slappy's magical powers that he, that he claims that he has, he goes to Halloween stores, he goes around neighborhoods that have Halloween decorations all over the place, and he brings these creatures and monsters to life, just like how in the first Goosebumps film it was like that too. So over the course of this film, these kids have to figure out how to stop all these monsters, how to slap, how to stop Slappy, and how to get their town back the way it was and to make it the way it was before Slappy came to be in their lives, too. So, overall, guys, I liked Goosebumps 2 quite a bit. It's not an amazing movie. I wouldn't even say it's an amazing sequel of any kind, but I really like this film a lot. For those who enjoyed the first Goosebumps film like I did, I think you'll have a lot of fun with this film. But do go into this film knowing that this film is basically much more flawed than the first film. There's more things about it that don't quite feel as fresh or as good or as original as maybe that first Goosebumps film managed to do. Uh, but it is a great, not even a great film, it's, it's a good film. It's a good film that does have a lot of things to offer its viewers, and especially if you're a Goosebumps fan, if you're a fan of the first film, I think you'll really be happy with the way this film turned out. 
So for my positives and negatives of Goosebumps 2, it's a very fun film, like I said. Um, I definitely never felt bored in this film. I was always entertained. I was always interested in seeing what Slappy the Dummy was going to do. I was always interested in seeing kind of how the Halloween monsters were going to be stopped, how the whole opening the book and bringing the monster back in the book element was going to be used again and stuff like that. So if you love the first film like I did, you'll have a lot of fun with this film. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Several returning monsters occur in this film. So like the Abominable Snowman of Pasadena from the first film, uh, the Werewolf of Beaver Swamp, I think his name is. He has a role in this movie. Slappy the Dummy, of course, comes back. Uh, so there, there's a couple of handful of Goosebumps-related monsters that come back. So it's always cool to see them come back. Also, the Garden Gnomes from the first film briefly come back in this film, too. So tons of great characters that you'll see from the first film returning for this one. Um, overall, I kind of like the whole idea of having new kids being the focus in a new setting and new elements being introduced to the story. So I like the whole taking place in New York and centering around a different group of kids with different goals in mind. And, you know, the first film was so much about that kid being new to town and making new friends and stuff like that. So this film really takes a different approach of these guys have been friends for a while. They're trying, they're trying to start up a small business. And, um, <clears throat> you know, there's just a new scenario we get to work with in the movie. So I liked how they do try to make something new for the story, kind of start things fresh for certain reasons. <clears throat> My throat's killing me for some reason. Hopefully I'm not getting the cold here, but moving on. Uh, new kids, new setting, uh, new elements being introduced for the story. Overall, I was just pretty happy as far as how the sequel was taken on. Obviously, there's things I'm going to get to in my negatives, but overall, I was pretty happy with how the film turned out. Also, I like the use of Slappy the dummy in this movie. <clears throat> um, he just has more to do in this film. I kind of like how he has like powers this time around. He doesn't just have books that he can open up and then a monster comes out and then that's it. Um, he really does kind of is kind of the the puppet master, if you will. He, ironically, he's a puppet himself. So I kind of liked how Slappy the Dummy was using this film and kind of how he has more abilities this time and is kind of more of a threat as a result too, which I also think is pretty effective for a villain. I also like the overall Halloween night feeling they went with in the movie because the film does take place a couple of days before Halloween and of the night of Halloween. Um, and it's really cool to kind of see how decorative they got the whole neighborhood. Um... Ken Jong from the Hangover films has a role in this movie. He plays one of the neighbors. His house is very decked out for Halloween. Um, I, I just really liked how they had the whole neighborhood really feel like it was a very extravagant, festive Halloween night. So they did a very good job with that. Uh, so rather this, they did film this during Halloween last year or they had to just turn this neighborhood into a Halloween town for just one night or a couple of nights. They did a very good job with the set of this movie. There's also tons of references to classic horror films. Uh, there's a reference to Child's Play at one point with Slappy the Dummy carrying around an object late at night. It definitely reminded me of Child's Play. Uh, there's other moments that, you know, remind me of like The Thing and other like classic horror films that definitely are trying to be referenced and stuff like that. So uh, just tons of fun here. Um, I would even say there's like an American Werewolf in London reference at one point and stuff like that. So uh, just tons of fun references that were used. Uh, once again, very much in the spirit of kind of cheesy, corny, old horror films, which I really liked a lot. For my negatives, though, I really would have preferred a, a story that was more so about the Goosebumps monsters coming alive again. Unfortunately, this time around, it's more so about alive decorations within the town. So it's more so about Slappy looking at a decoration, if he thinks it's going to help him with win this fight and stuff like that. He'll turn the balloon spider into a monster. He'll turn the gummy bears in the Halloween trick-or-treat buckets into monsters. He'll turn the trick-or-treat bags into monsters and stuff like that. So there was just it was just more of a, a generic not so much about Goosebumps anymore kind of an approach, really. Um, obviously, there's there's characters that are in the spirit of other Goosebump monsters. Obviously, there's returning Goosebump monsters here, too. But I would say the generic Halloween decorations kind of outnumber the Goosebumps monsters this time around, which is kind of unfortunate. I Like I said, I would really would have liked to have seen more monsters from the books come alive here that we didn't get to see in the first film and stuff like that. So um, kind of disappointed on that side of the film. Um, also, Jack Black's role is very, very small in this film. In fact, if you look at IMDb, he's almost uncredited for this movie. You kind of had to dig through the cast to find him. And that's really too bad. He was a huge part of the first film. 
And he's kind of an important part of this film, too, when he does show up. So it's more of a glorified cameo this time around. And that's not a spoiler at all because he is in the trailers for this film. So most of you probably already know that he is in this film. Um, I, I think the biggest reason for him not being very big in this film is for the simple reason that he was dedicated to House with a Clock on Its Walls earlier this year. So he probably needed more filming time in his schedule for that more so than this movie. Understandable, you know, and... I'll be honest too, House on the Clock and Its Walls is a better film than this movie. So I perfectly understood his choice there. Uh, but as a result, it is more so a glorified cameo than an actual role. So for those who are kind of hoping for more Arl Stein in this film, it's more of a cameo this time than an actual role, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, Slappy's motivation is also very silly this time around. I get it, it's goosebumps. It's not supposed to be this big, serious horror film plot. But... When you do find out what Slappy's really trying to do, it's just kind of cheesy and corny. It's just like, okay, let's just get this over with kind of a thing. Uh, so unfortunately, unlike the first film where it's monsters being stuck in those books and they just want to get out for once and be able to live their lives for once and stuff like that, this time around it's just more so, hey, we want Halloween to be forever and Slappy wants a family and that's about it. And just like, uh, that they really could have done a better job writing that for me personally. So it just felt very episodic to me, and I guess that's why I didn't really care for it that much. I also felt like the resolutions this time around were very, very easy. Um, in the first film, you know, obviously characters could hide in buildings and do stuff that could temporarily take care of a problem. This time around, they could literally just keep that Haunted Halloween book open the entire time, walk around the town, and there would have been no, like, difficulty besides that outside of slapping getting a hold of the book and stuff like that so they literally could have just kept it open the whole film walked around the whole town where there was a problem and then by the time the halloween night was over more than likely all their problems could have been resolved just by keeping that book open which for some reason they aren't going to do the whole movie i don't know why um so there's just very easy resolutions i was able to point out myself while watching the movies like why don't they just keep the book open the entire time it's just like just do that, and all your problems will go away, really. Um, so for me personally, I thought that aspect of the film was very disappointing and really not written very well. I also would have liked to see more first film elements in this film, and what I mean by that is more things that happened in the first film showing up in this film. So what happened to those characters in the first film? What happened to Arl Stein's daughter in the first film? What happened to the aunt in the first film? What happened to the mom in the first film? What happened to the kid that was the best friend of the guy in the first film and even though I, I gave the compliment of I like the idea of new kids being the main focus in this film I kind of am curious what happened to those kids from the first movie I, I'm kind of curious to see maybe R.L. Stein could have brought that up at some point like maybe he found a good college or maybe something happened in the school that made him all right with the world and stuff like I don't know something they could have done more with just the first one other than just looking up online oh hey Slappy the Dummy did something in Delaware I would have liked to see more things from the first film show up in this film too, but overall, 8.5 out of 10 for me. I really enjoyed Goosebumps too. If you really like the first Goosebumps film like I did, I think you'll have a lot of fun with the sequel like I did too, so 8.5 out of 10 for me. It's a good film, not an amazing film, but I think it is an overall good follow-up to the first Goosebumps film.